Überlingen Midair Collision On July 1, 2002, a tragic event occurred in the skies above Überlingen, Germany. Two planes collided midair. BAL Bashkirian Airlines Flight 2937, a Tupolev Tu-154 carrying 60 passengers, including 46 children on a UNESCO trip, and a DHL Flight 611, a Boeing 757 cargo jet. The collision destroyed both aircraft, killing all 71 people on board. What made this disaster even more shocking was that it all happened under the watch of a single air traffic controller, Peter Nielsen, working in Zurich. Due to staff shortages, he was managing both flights alone. As DHL Flight 611 climbed to 36,000 feet for fuel efficiency, Bashkirian Flight 2937 also reached that same height, setting the stage for disaster. Minutes before the crash, Nielsen ordered the Tupolev to descend, but he didn't know that the plane's collision avoidance systems were giving the opposite instructions. The Tupolev started descending but climbed back up in response to its systems, while the Boeing descended following its own system's commands. The two planes collided at around 35,000 feet. There were a couple of reasons behind this tragedy. Nielsen was the only controller on duty that time, which was against the regulations. The collision warning systems were offline and an alert that could have warned them failed to sound. These failures left no chance for the pilots to avoid the crash. In the aftermath, Germany was held responsible for the actions of the Air Traffic Control Service and compensation was awarded to Bashkirian Airlines. A criminal investigation followed, leading to manslaughter charges for eight employees, including Nielsen, with three receiving suspended sentences. The emotional toll was just as heavy. Nielsen, overwhelmed by guilt and stress, was memorialized at his workstation. But the most chilling part of the story came from Vitaly Kaloyev, who lost his entire family in the crash. In 2004, Kaloyev took matters into his own hands, killing Nielsen in a brutal attack. He was convicted of manslaughter, but later rose to power, becoming a deputy minister in North Ossetia, receiving honors but never expressing regret. Compensation for the families ranged from 30,000 to 36,000 Swiss francs, but some families sought higher amounts, which were denied by the Swiss federal court in 2011. This tragedy left a lasting impact, changing lives, laws, and the way the world views aviation safety. JetBlue Flight 292 On September 21, 2005, JetBlue Flight 292, an Airbus A320, turned a normal journey into a nail-biting event. The flight which departed from Bob Hope Airport in Burbank, California was bound for John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. But shortly after takeoff, the pilots discovered the nose landing gear was jammed in a sideways position, setting the stage for a dramatic emergency landing. Captain Scott Burke and First Officer David Rassler, with extensive experience between them, faced the challenge head on. After confirming the landing gear issue by flying low over Long Beach Airport, the pilots decided to land at Los Angeles International Airport. This decision was made for good, as LAX has longer runways and better safety equipment. To reduce the risk of fire and lower the landing speed, the plane circled for over two hours in a figure eight pattern to burn off excess fuel. This was necessary because the Airbus A320 cannot dump fuel mid-flight. Passengers, meanwhile, faced a surreal and terrifying experience. They watched live news coverage of their flight on the plane's direct TV system, which was later turned off before the landing. Emergency crews at LAX prepared for the worst while the pilots executed an exceptional landing on runway 25L. Sparks and flames erupted as the nose gear hit the ground, but the plane came to a stop safely, just 1,000 feet before the runway's end. No injuries were reported, and passengers calmly deplaned using airport stairs. The investigation revealed that worn-out seals and a malfunction in the brake steering control unit caused the incident. Airbus later updated the system to prevent such occurrences. Despite the high drama, experts agreed the passengers were never in significant danger due to the aircraft's robust design, capable of landing without nose gear if necessary. The aircraft, nicknamed Canyon Blue, was repaired and returned to service. While the flight number was changed to 358, the incident remains a testament to skillful piloting and aviation engineering, leaving an undeniable mark on aviation history. Northwest Airlink Flight 5719 On December 1, 1993, Northwest Airlink Flight 5719 departed Minneapolis, St. Paul en route to International Falls with a planned stop in Hibbing, Minnesota. Operated by Express Airlines 2, the Jetstream 31 turboprop started out as a normal flight. 
But somewhere over the snowy landscape of Minnesota, a few small mistakes turned what should have been a routine trip into tragedy. The aircraft never reached its destination. The flight took off from Minneapolis with 16 passengers and a crew of two. The captain, Marvin Fallitz, had a troubled history with proficiency tests but was in control during this flight. Delayed by over 40 minutes due to late arrival and the removal of a passenger to reduce weight, the flight seemed ordinary until the crew requested a change in approach. They opted for runway 13 instead of 31 due to a tailwind and precipitation. As the plane began its approach, something went wrong. The crew descended too quickly and altitude awareness was lost. The aircraft struck the top of a tree, continued 634 feet, hit a group of aspen trees and finally collided with two ridges, coming to rest inverted. Initially, icing was suspected, but investigations revealed it was not a factor. The real cause of the accident was the breakdown in crew coordination, with Fallitz's actions contributing to the loss of altitude awareness during the unstable approach. Fallitz, known for strict adherence to checklists, was also reported to have volatile temperament. He was accused of rough control handling and intimidating behavior. He had also failed multiple proficiency tests in his career, which is unusual for a professional pilot. The NTSB concluded that crew mismanagement and inadequate oversight led to the crash, but this still leaves quite a lingering question regarding what could have actually happened inside the cabin. Kenya Airways Flight 507 The passengers of Kenya Airways Flight 507, en route from Abidjan to Nairobi, could never have imagined their lives ending in such a way. It was May 5, 2007, when the plane was taking off from Douala International Airport in Cameroon. The Boeing 737-800, a relatively new aircraft just six months old, crashed into a mangrove swamp around three miles south of the airport. Sadly, there were no survivors. The flight had already been delayed, and while other airlines waited for better weather, the Kenya Airways crew decided to take off despite worsening conditions. The pilot, Captain Francis Wamwea, initiated the flight without receiving clearance from air traffic control. Once airborne, the aircraft began to bank right, which Captain Wamwea attempted to correct. However, after just 42 seconds of flight, the autopilot was engaged but never activated. This led to confusion and the aircraft's increasing tilt, which went unnoticed. The captain's repeated attempts to regain control only made matters worse. The plane continued its dangerous spiral, with both the captain and first officer offering conflicting commands. Within two minutes of takeoff, the aircraft was nearly inverted and descending rapidly. The plane crashed into the swamp, killing all 114 people on board, including passengers from 26 countries. An investigation revealed a series of errors, most notably, the lack of coordination between the pilots and the failure to notice the plane's excessive banking. The captain's history of overconfidence and poor communication with his crew was also a factor. As the investigation continued, it became clear that the crash was a result of poor decision-making, insufficient crew training, and failure to adhere to safety protocols. The wreckage was found submerged, with the bodies of the victims badly disfigured. The tragedy remains one of the most heartbreaking aviation accidents in recent history. Flagship Airlines Flight 3379 On the evening of December 13, 1994, Flagship Airlines Flight 3379, under the American Eagle branding, took off from Piedmont Triad International Airport en route to Raleigh Durham International. The flight seemed routine, but what awaited in the foggy, sleeting night was something no one could have foreseen. As the aircraft, a British aerospace jet stream made a missed approach to Raleigh Durham, disaster struck. In a tragic turn of events, the plane crashed, killing two pilots and 13 passengers. Surprisingly, Five passengers survived but with serious injuries. The cause was the weather that night. Extreme fog and drizzle made visibility nearly impossible, and the temperature hovered just below zero, adding to the chilling atmosphere surrounding the crash. The aircraft manufactured just a few years earlier had logged over 6,500 flight hours. Investigators later discovered that Captain Hillis had mistakenly believed an engine failure caused the crash. His failure to follow proper procedures for engine failure, go-arounds, and stall recovery was a key factor. Flagship Airlines was also criticized for not addressing gaps in pilot training. Afterward, a memorial was set up in Cary, North Carolina, to remember the lives lost that night, serving as a serious reminder of the cost of mistakes in aviation. VASP Flight 168 VASP Flight 168 was a Brazilian domestic flight that started at Sao Paulo Airport, one of the airline's main hubs. The flight had two legs, first from Sao Paulo to Rio de Janeiro, then onto Fortaleza. It was operated by a Boeing 727-200 carrying 137 people, 
128 passengers and 9 crew members. The first leg of the flight from Sao Paulo to Rio went smoothly, as did most of the second leg to Fortaleza. However, as the plane approached Fortaleza, the captain continued to descend below the cleared altitude of 5,000 feet, likely due to confusion caused by the city lights. Despite warnings from the ground proximity warning system and the co-pilot raising concerns about nearby mountains, the plane continued descending. Tragically, it crashed into a hillside at just 1,950 feet, killing everyone on board, including well-known Brazilian businessman Edson Quiroz. The investigation blamed the crash on pilot error, a grim reminder of how crucial situational awareness and safety protocols are in aviation. Vasp had a long story as an airline, but faced tough times in its later years. It suffered two more fatal crashes in 1986 and 1992, although with fewer lives lost. Financial struggles ultimately led to the airline's shutdown in 2008. Even today, the story of Flight 168 remains a tragic moment in Brazilian aviation history. Bergen Air Flight 301 Bergen Air Flight 301, a charter flight from Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, to Frankfurt, Germany, tragically crashed just after takeoff, killing all 189 people on board on February 6, 1996. The flight, which was supposed to stop in Gander, Canada, and Berlin, never made it past the Dominican Republic. The aircraft, a Boeing 757-200, had seen better days. It was 12 years old and had flown with Eastern Airlines before being passed around to different companies, eventually landing with Bergen Air. The crew was led by Captain Ahmed Erdem, who had over 24,000 flight hours, so they had plenty of experience. However, during takeoff, the captain's airspeed indicator malfunctioned. The first officer's indicator was fine, but the conflicting readings caused a lot of confusion in the cockpit. As the plane climbed to 2,500 feet, a series of warning systems went off, including overspeed and stall alerts. But instead of recognizing the gravity of the situation, the crew became more confused. The plane's autopilot was also receiving the wrong data, making the aircraft pitch up and lose speed, putting it in danger of stalling. Despite the clear warnings, the captain ignored suggestions from the crew to recover from the stall. Just minutes later, the plane started spinning uncontrollably and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, killing everyone on board. The investigation found that the crash was mainly due to the crew failing to recognize the stall and not following proper recovery procedures. It was also determined that the blocked pitot tube caused by the wasp nest played a critical role. This disaster remains the deadliest aviation accident in the Dominican Republic, and it severely damaged Bergen Air's reputation, ultimately leading to its bankruptcy later that year. Mandela Airlines Flight 091 On September 5, 2005, Mandela Airlines Flight 091, traveling from Medan to Jakarta, tragically crashed just moments after takeoff. The Boeing 737-200, with 117 passengers and crew on board, stalled and crashed into a busy residential area near Polonia International Airport in Medan, Indonesia. Among those on the flight were North Sumatra's governor and his predecessor, both of whom died in the crash, which made it even more shocking for locals. The investigation by Indonesia's National Transportation Safety Committee pointed to pilot error as the cause. The flight crew didn't properly configure the plane for takeoff. With the flags and slats retracted, the plane couldn't generate enough lift to stay airborne. The crew didn't seem to receive the usual warning about the issue, which led to the disastrous stall. The aircraft involved, a Boeing 737, had been in service since 1981 and was 24 years old at the time of the crash. It was acquired by Mandela Airlines in 1994 and despite being an older aircraft, it had a valid airworthiness certificate until November 2005. The crash itself was horrifying. After a brief takeoff, the plane veered left and right before stalling. The aircraft hit several approach lights and then plummeted onto a busy road, destroying cars, houses, and shops as it exploded into flames. The fire spread quickly, and many nearby residents trying to help became trapped in the flames. While 149 people lost their lives, including 49 on the ground, a handful of survivors, mostly seated at the back of the plane, managed to escape the fiery wreckage. Despite a chaotic rescue effort, the situation was overwhelming for first responders. In the aftermath, there was national mourning. The government promised compensation to the victims' families, and investigations into the cause of the crash continued, with the NTSC working alongside international experts to piece together the tragic event. British Airways Flight 38 British Airways Flight 38 seemed like any other routine flight, heading from Beijing to London on January 17, 2008. The Boeing 777 was making its way across over 5,000 miles of the sky 
with passengers and crew expecting a smooth landing at Heathrow. With just minutes to go, both engines suddenly failed. The aircraft started descending fast, gliding silently over busy streets, narrowly missing buildings and cars. It crash-landed just short of the runway. Incredibly, everyone survived, though 47 people were injured, with one person seriously hurt. But this wasn't just any crash. It was the first hull loss of a Boeing 777, an aircraft famous for its safety. The investigation into what went wrong revealed something shocking, ice crystals in the jet fuel. These crystals, which weren't detected during the flight, ended up clogging the fuel-oil heat exchangers messing with the fuel flow just when the engines needed it most. It was a flaw that no one had seen coming in the Rolls-Royce Trent 800 engines, and it led to major changes in the aviation industry. New modifications were quickly put into place to make sure this type of failure wouldn't happen again. The crash scene was chaotic, but thanks to the crew's calm handling of the emergency, the situation didn't escalate further. They followed emergency protocols to the letter, and their quick thinking saved lives. The plane came to a stop on the grass, its landing gear crushed and fuel leaking, but miraculously, no fire broke out. It was a close call, but it could have been far worse. The airport's operations were temporarily halted, flights were diverted, and the aviation world was left with plenty of questions. Captain Peter Burkill and his crew were hailed for their skill and composure, but the aftermath left a lasting impact on Burkill himself. Months later, he admitted that the experience haunted him. Today, Flight 38's story stands as a testament to the crew's resilience and the constant drive to make air travel even safer.